Anderson. That's the Andersons. Yeah. I'm talking about the Tereniaks. Oh, oh, okay. and, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Oh, all right. Let me see. Get my brain working here. All right. Things flashing at me. Let's pray and then we'll get into this morning's <clears> message. Uh, again, Father, Lord, as I pray, oh God. Uh, Lord, devil doesn't want me preaching this message because, again, Lord, I'm going to be focusing your light on him. Lord, and he's already been trying, Lord, for days now, Lord, to derail this. Uh, Lord, you know what's gone on. Lord, and even this morning, though they've been minor things, Father, I can see it's his ugly hand in it. Lord, and I pray, please, put a hedge about the church, Lord. Lord, help me, dear God, to do this in your power, in your strength, and in your wisdom, Lord, because he needs to be exposed. Uh, people need to know the truth, Lord, of the satanic deception, Lord, and what his real plot is, Lord, in this world. And we pray and we ask for this to the glory to, Lord, in honor of your precious Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And that's what this morning's message is all about, satanic deception. <coughs> satanic deception. What Satan's really got going on. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians, I mean, I already mentioned this morning about, you know, the, uh, you know, Satan worshipers, you know, getting into the uh, public libraries now. I'm sorry, is somebody there? The camera. Camera, did you put it on? Yes. Oh, okay. I think it's on. Okay. Yes, I think Kathy's not yeah. here. Okay. Yeah, I see the, the little red eyeball there. Thank you for flashing at me. Thank you, though, for... Okay. No? No, I did go over there and, and start it. But, and I keep thinking I need to have, like, a list here of, you know, okay, make sure that you have. <laughs> kind of thing. My brain is being what is. Thank you. All right, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, I forget what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, uh, I put up some pictures about, uh, you know, how they've been having the uh, story hour in public libraries, and they've been doing this for several years now, where they've been having the sodomites come in and reading the kids. Well, now they're having Satanists come in and do this, and that's a pretty shocking stuff uh, that you see there. But, you know what, folks? Uh, as, as much as we hate that, I'm going to tell you here this morning, guess what? That's a smoke screen. It's a smoke screen. It's not as real. It's not the path he's really going. It's not what he's really looking to do. Second Thessalonians 2, 1 through 12. And we'll read most of the chapter. Second Thessalonians 2, 1 through 12. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus, <laughs> that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that? When I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Amen and amen. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. That's the working of Satan. Deception. With all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they might all be damned 
who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, just this last weekend in our state capital, the so-called Church of Satan yeah. conducted an international convention. Yeah. Of course, the so-called Christian world you know, it'll include your nominal churches, your apostate churches, <laughs> your Laodicean churches, as well as all the pretend Christian churches. You know, we're all aghast that such an event could take place. Well, really, where have you been in the last hundred years, folks? <laughs> right? Even Satan's true church, the Roman Catholic Church, had among its own ranks those who expressed you know, uh, you know, just just horror that such a thing could be held and be so largely attended. Smoke screen. <laughs> and, I mean, when the Catholic Church stands up and you know, yeah, uh huh. I mean, now to me, you know, and we, we've known about it for a while, and I'll at least get surprised. But, you know, but the mo most notable occurrence was their attack against the Bible at this. Uh, referring to it as our tool of oppressing them. Uh, and that they're going to do all they can to destroy it. We'll, we'll come back to that a little later in the message. Simple facts are these. Okay. Satan has always, always had a significant open following. Read your Bible. Number two, only the impotent an apostasy of the Church of Jesus Christ. Okay. There lies a direct reason as to why this group is able to be so open and so vocal. Plain and simple. I mean, this group and what it does, okay, is only a smoke screen for the deception of the plan of the Father of lies and liars. Okay. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2.11 Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Well, we shouldn't be. But man, most of Christianity apparently is. And this all stems from the fourth fact. The willful ignorance of the scriptures by born-again believers. You upset the fact that the, that they can be Satan caught playing the churches. We're doing our job. It will happen. Bless you. Thank you. I mean, the scriptures very clearly expose the devil, how he operates, and what his plans are. I mean, it's not like there's been any great secret going on in front. But both the lack of the knowledge of what the scriptures say and the refusal to believe what they say is what's allowed Satan to be able to move his agenda along you know, so successfully in the world. You know, the biblical doctrines of the Antichrist beast you know, were once so very clearly understood <laughs> You know, amongst the churches, I mean, you know, for example, you know, uh, your authorized Bible, most of them, some of them won't have it anymore these days, but most of them will still have in it the dedicatory in the beginning of it, like from the translators of the Receptus, you know, into our English language Bible, the dedicatory that they made to King James, who sponsored it. And in it, it plainly speaks of the man of sin in relation to the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church and of the persecutions against them by, as they say, Popish persons. Yeah? I mean, come on. I mean, that, that was the dedicatory in the front of the authorized Bible. I mean, from the time that the Roman Catholic Church began to rise to power in the 4th century, right down through the Philadelphia period of the church, I mean, there was never any question in the mind of any Bible believer 
who the popes are, and what the Roman Catholic Church is. It's not like this is some new discovery of things. I mean, you know, it's only been with the growing apostasy and the subsequent ecumenicalism resulting from it that Rome has been able to conceal and camouflage itself in the world today. 1 John 4, 3 talks about the spirit and working of Antichrist. Now it's been present in the world since the Lord promised the Christ, promised the woman seed. Look, it, it's not like it's something new. It's not like it's something unusual or strange that has gone on. Yeah. And you know the thing is, you know that spirit and working of the Antichrist pops up in the very next chapter, Genesis chapter four. There it comes, you know, right there we have Cain, who was of that wicked one. And again, 1 John 3, 12. You know, back his mother, Eve, proclaims, I have gotten a man from the Lord when he's born, believing Cain to be the Christ, the woman seed. Now the scriptures say otherwise. Those over there I got a couple of things I'm going to read here this morning. You know, and this is still Satan's plan today. He's consistent. Okay, he's consistent. He's in it for the long haul. You know, uh, you know, he 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 he's got uh, a plan that he's been following faithfully all along, and it's to present to the world a false. The Antichrist. You know, a man who is going to fool the entire world into believing that he is not the devil, okay, not the devil, but Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Now, in fact, his counterfeit is going to be so convincing that he is going to deceive many believers during the tribulation. Christ says this in Matthew 24. Go over there with me. Matthew 24. I want to look at 21 to 25. This is the Christ <laughs> telling people, hey, this is what's going to happen. Pay attention. Matthew 24, 21 through 25. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets. And folks, I'm going to tell you, there's been hundreds of them. Uh, I want to say maybe three years ago, uh, I had a message and I, I gave you a bunch of them. And it's, uh, um, Jesus Christ. There's a guy running around today. Uh, oh, I forget where he is. I think well, somewhere over in the Middle East somewhere that's claiming that he is Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. It says, Behold, I have told you before. You know? Well, I guess that's <laughs> short attention span, short memories, huh? This is the true deception that the devil is preparing the world for. Yeah, I don't like seeing folks dressed up. You know, and they, uh, I mean, one of them is this incredible demonic costume, sitting there surrounded by three to six-year-old toddlers. You know, 
telling them that Satan loves you and your parents are liars, you know, whatever, who knows what else they would tell them. You know. Okay? If you guys thought, who he's going to present? That's a smoke screen, folks. That's a smoke screen. Okay? When the Church of Rome stands up and goes, oh, by, isn't that there? You know, who do you think you're lying to? Well, it's night. But man, it's just like it just goes over people's heads anymore. Yeah. Okay? That's the true deception. Not a open Satan worship like went on at Satan Con. Okay, but the worship of the Antichrist. The worship of the Antichrist. Go over to Revelation 13 with me. Revelation 13. 1 through 18. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. And we don't wage physical war. We're waging a spiritual war. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonder so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, not of the beast, to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man may buy or sell, save he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. We won't go into all of that. We've studied that before. Maybe sometime in the future we'll go into that again. Hey, but his Antichrist. Okay. You know, the devil doesn't care what you believe or practice just as long as it's not the truth. He doesn't care one bit. Doesn't matter to him. His purpose, his goal, though, is to take the place of God Almighty. That's what he wants. That's what he desires. He strives, therefore, to imitate the Godhead as closely as he possibly can. Revelation 13 were introduced to the unholy trinity of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And of course, again, these are not the names by which they are going to refer to themselves. 
or that they are going to be referred to by their followers. Why are they here? Those are the names given to them by God so as to readily identify them to us. To identify them, okay, to define them for us in the scriptures. That's not the name they're going to go by. I am the great friend. You know, no. <laughs> no. The only time that the devil is going to be out there clearly, blatantly, you know, come follow me, okay, is at the end of the tribulation period when he comes out of the pit. And then again, just shows you how vile and wicked man is Christ living on the earth for a thousand years when the devil comes out of the pit. They'd rather follow him knowingly and willingly. But that's not the case here. They're going to refer to themselves as the Father and the Son. Okay, and his prophet demonstrating the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, he's even got his own angels. Revelation 12, 7. Right. See the very elect. Okay, and the Antichrist is going to be an imitation of the Lord Jesus Christ in as many ways as Satan is going to be able to manufacture. You know what? This man is going to claim to have been divinely conceived. I'm yeah. yeah, sorry, Satan's his father. He's going to claim a Jewish heritage. So the scriptures tell us that he's a half breed only half Jew, half Syrian. Dan 11.37 tells us, guess what? He won't take a human woman as a bride. Why? Church is my bride. Right? He's going to come declaring peace and a kingdom of peace. How many have read, you know, Matthew 5, 6, something else, the attitude? He's going to be struck down by an enemy. That's all the name devil means. It is enemy, the enemy. He's going to be struck down by an enemy in war. He's going to be wounded, and the wound's going to be in his head on the right side. It's going to be a fatal wound. Again, I've covered all these in messages and lessons in the past for Satan this morning. I'm not giving you the scripture for that. But after three days and three nights, guess what happens? He's going to be resurrected from the dead by the false prophet. Yeah. He will be blind, though, in his right eye, crippled in his right arm. It's at this point when the Antichrist is resurrected from the dead that Satan himself enters into the son of perdition just like he did 2,000 years ago and then he's going to go and he is going to declare his kingdom and seek himself and the holy of holies and declare himself to be God okay. not Satan God And the majority of the world are going to buy right into it. They're going to buy. Okay, this is the strong delusion that the Most High God sends upon the earth during the tribulation. And it's that very spirit that is at work in the world right now today. You know, I mentioned at the beginning of the message about, you know, one of the woman speakers there at SatanCon spoke of waging an active battle against Christians' tool of oppression. And uh, I watched the video. You know, she pulls out, she produces a Bible. And I'm, I'm going to assume it was, it was a Bible. I'm going to assume it was the real, real deal. It was the authorized version. They know the difference. You know, and start ripping pages out of it. You know, uh, dramatic. You know, maybe the those in, in, in attendance. Hardly impressing anybody with any knowledge. Go ahead. <laughs> Tear it up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. Uh, they don't realize, I'm 
rather be in duped themselves so severely. You know. Now about three months ago, I, I gave y'all a handout in, in the Sunday school with information taken from Gail Ripplinger's book, New Age Virgins. You know, and it listed 12, 12 doctrines that are going to be able to be taught out of uh, the approved Bible that will be being used by the one world religion during the tribulation. I'm just going to run through it real quick again here for you. Hopefully I'll still have the, you know, but uh, what they're going to do, the, that one world Bible, they're going to remove the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ because it, it just exposes too you know, much. And it's going to be replaced with the apocryphal books, particularly two, the Shepherd of Hermes and the Epistle of Barnabas. With that, these 12 things will be able to be taught out of that one world Bible. Number one, taking the name of the beast. And again, in the handout, it's got all the scripture references. I'm not going to give you those here again for sake of time. Number two, surrendering to the beast. Number three, the formation of a one world government. Number four, murdering those who refuse to take the name of the beast. Number five, worshiping the virgin and or religious virgins. Number six, receiving of another spirit. Number seven, seeking power. Number eight, believing that God is present in and is only a part of all creation. Now, this is as it's found in things like Hinduism, shamanism, uh, oneness theology. God is, you know, pantheistic, monotheistic. Uh, yeah. You know, to avoid marriage and to embrace and to promote fornication. To abstain from fasting. To subscribe to the New Age root race theory. Okay. Uh, again, we'll go into that, but you know. And that you are saved by the initiating rite of water baptism. And then by the keeping of the twelve commandments of the beast. I want to read you another. And this is pretty telling, right here. It's a statement made by a man by the name of Dr. Richard Day, uh, dates from 1969. Uh, Dr. Day had been both a professor of pediatrics at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, as well as at Mount Sinai Medical School, uh, and from 1965 to 1968, he was the National uh, Medical Director of Planned Parenthood. Okay. Note the date. Okay, uh, this is March 20th, 1969. Okay, this is a quote taken from notes by uh, a Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan. Uh, he was in attendance at this. He was a practicing pedi pediatrician at the time. He was attending that seminar. Okay, this was a seminar for pediatricians. It was about pediatrics. The topic of Dr. Day's lecture was the steps that are already in progress in order to bring about the new world order. Now there's an interesting topic for a, you know, a seminar on pediatrics. Okay. Just to give you an idea, okay, how, how can we end up with Satanists in toddler reading circles in public libraries. Okay. Here's the quote. In order to do this, the Bible will be changed. It will be rewritten to fit the new religion. Gradually, key words will be replaced with new words having various shades of meaning. Then the meaning attached to the word can be close to the old word. And as time goes on, other shades of meaning of that word can be emphasized instead. And then gradually, that word replaced with another word. He, he went on himself and said, I don't know if I'm making that clear. But the idea is that everything in Scripture need not be rewritten. Just key words replaced by other words. The variability in meaning attached to any word 
can be used as a tool to change the entire meaning of scripture and therefore make it acceptable for the new one world religion. He states, most people won't know the difference. And he went on to say, the few who do notice the difference won't be enough to matter. March 30th, 1969. Folks, go ahead. Count the decades. Count the decades. Subterfuge. Smoke screens. 